This is a short video about how you access and create a session as a session leader. In order to log in, you input the link or the IP address that you have gotten for where the Think Tank software or server is located. In my case, I log on to Think Tank Learning Server. I log in as an account holder by inputting my username and password. Press login. And then the actual application loads on my computer. The first screen I'll see is my administration or home screen. This is where I can create a new session from here. Or if I have worked on it already, I can just input the session ID and the pass key. Or if I see it here, I can access this as well. In this case, I want to create a new session. So I click on the left side on the plus sign where it says create new session. A little pop-up box appears. And here I give my session a name. I can input a short description about what the session is about. And I can enter a pass key for this session. These are defaults that are usually you don't need to, to touch in order to create the session. You can always go back and do it as well. Then I can start my session by clicking start. Session number 105 has been automatically created for me. This is the start screen for a think tank session. The start screen has four general activity areas, as you see on the left the plan, the background, the agenda, and the outcome. The plan is used to think about and input information about the strategy for the session and the general session plan. The background area is used for uploading and talking about information or pre-reads. Third area is about the actual agenda for the session, and this is where I'm going to work in a minute. And the outcome is a section where I input or capture the results of the actual session. Now, let's build the session that you do in the agenda. In order to put in activities, you will go to the Designer tab. And here, you can select between different activities, crowdsourcing, assessment, visual activities, or you can input activities from other sessions. In this case, I need to do a brainstorm and a vote. So a brainstorm is found within the crowds sourcing activity. Uh, and the type of uh, brainstorm I'd like to do is a, a custom crowdsource. So what I do is I click, drag, and drop it into the agenda. And then I have a custom crowdsourcing activity placed on my agenda. I also need a vote. The vote is found under assessment activities. And in this case, I like a custom assessment. I drag and drop it into the agenda. Then I've selected the activities that I need. The next thing I need to do is, of course, go in and adjust them to the specific needs. First of all, I have a welcome screen. The options here is that I can change text, subtitle, or I can go in and change the actual image that you see on the front by selecting a, a file that I have on my computer. I will do this one. And in a minute, you'll see that a new picture has appeared that is not the standard default picture like you see in the background here.
The second acti activity I have is a brainstorm function. By default, it's called a custom crowdsource. So what I want to do is change the name to the brainstorm. And I want to brainstorm ideas, strategy ideas. So I type in and click on return and then I have changed the title. I can also input a description and I can put in a time in the agenda when, when this needs to start. Actually, the welcome time up here, where here we can input the time when the meeting starts. So we say it's going to start at 9 o'clock. Brainstorm will then take place at around 9.30. In the brainstorm, there are three categories, as you know. Um, so here I can tailor make it to my needs. In this situation, I want uh, general ideas first. What I do here is double click on the text and then I can change it. The ideas I want to have has to be about um, targets for 2014. I also want to make sure that we capture financial objectives. So I put in a new category called financials by clicking in the lower bottom. And I also want a set of objectives that has to do with non-financials. I create a second category. Now, in order to input ideas, I click on general ideas and then I can input the ideas here which is um, uh, turnover. It could be sales leads. It could be orders outstanding. Production lead time. And so forth. Once the ideas are coming in, my objective is then to categorize them into financials and non-financials. In this way, um, we can have them categorized and work further with them. Turnover is a financial number, so I highlight it, drag and drop it into financial. Sales lead is a non-financial. It has to do with uh, numerical numbers, how many sales leads do we have, so that's a non-financial. Orders outstanding is also not a directly financial number, so it goes into non-financials. And production lead time is also a non-financial number. So in this sense, this is how I want to do my brainstorm. Now, I don't want my session participants or thinkers to be able to comment on it, and I don't want them um, to see the categories yet, so I turn these ones off. Also turn off the thinker's ability to uh, access the categories and to put in comments for now. So the only thing a thinker would see is what is white. They can input ideas for targets for 2014. And then I can go on to financials and then non-financials at a later stage. For the custom assessment, that has to do with figuring out which of these objectives that are the most important for us. So I'm going to change the title for uh, prioritization of objectives because that's what we want to do here. Now <clears throat> when I have my ideas for or when we, when we have developed the ideas for financial targets and on financial targets. Um, I can take out, and in this case I'll take out the non-financials and put them into a vote. So I mark them like this and I drag them on top of the voting activity and then I have a few options 
to, to select either if you want to bring in name tags and timestamps I just go forward and press I'll take what, what's there and then they appear sales leads order outstanding and production lead time in the vote now the next thing I do is then figure out what type of vote do I want so I click on the wheel on the columns go into the, the type of vote that I need and in this case I'll use a low and medium and high importance uh, score I do OK so now we have a column that lets people rank low medium or high I will input what we have, what the vote is about by changing the text on the column and in this case it will be importance of the objectives and the description is an area that helps the thinkers understand what they need to do All right, so now I have a text. In order to make sure that the text can be seen, I click on the border, drag it down, and then it's visible. Here we can then click high, low, medium, depending on what we think. And we can then cast a vote when we are satisfied with it. We then press vote. And then we then see the results. We see them numerically and graphically. And what I want to see first is just the graph. So up in the toolbar on the top right, there's a part chart. I click on that, and then I only see the graphical representation of the results. And then I'm done with making my simple think tank session. Thank you for watching this video.